Scott Schiller for Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and Team G503 here on YouTube. I got a message from a gentleman and uh, he was asking me something very specific and I got thinking about what he asked me. I said, wow, you know, that, that'd be a great idea for a video. And I did film it when I installed it. I filmed everything, just haven't really caught up with everything I've got filmed. He asked me, how do I install the pinto hook on the chassis of my MB? Hey, great idea to do a video. Uh, there is some differences between the MB and the GPW. Uh, I'll show you that in the video. You know, these things like this, you wouldn't think, you say, you know, hey, you know, a video about installing a pinto hook. What a fantastic idea because it does get asked a lot. And that's the whole idea of these videos is to help folks out with, you know, what part goes where, what bolt goes where. And uh, let's dive in and put that pinto hook on the back side of the 43 Willis MB. On the back side of the frame, you'll notice these four holes here, and that's where the pinnel hook mounts to. But more importantly is this exterior reinforcement for the pinnel hook, and that is part number A534. And I'll move the camera up top so you can see how it's fastened to the lower cross member and the rear supports there. As you can see, it's welded on. We've got the actual pintle hook here, and that is part number A593. And I'll show you kind of how this operates. There's a little lever up top that actuates against the cam to lock it shut. And these are these are quite tough to open uh, once they lock down. Very, very stout, very, very secure. They're cast very heavy. And that's going to be one of the issues that the gentleman who asked me about this video, he said, these are so heavy, I can't hold that thing on and line the bolts all up like that. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks here to make it easy. I've got the two bolts and fasteners here. They're 7 16s, 20 by inch and an eighth. These are the actual original ones that are EC marked. I've cleaned all up on a wire wheel. And these are going to be located at the top of the pinto hook when we install it. Our eye bolts are part number A6393, and they've got the coinciding lock washer and nut. These are heavy duty, and these are for your safety chains on your trailer or whatever you're pulling. And there's going to be a little bit of discrepancy here in, in which direction those are mounted. Next up is our internal reinforcement plate, and it's part number A552, and it goes behind the support as such. Interestingly enough, these are not found in the Ford GPW parts manual. It's sort of an MBMA kind of thing. I'll show you on the back side of the frame here exactly where that goes. It just simply slides in there on the top lip, and the holes line up perfectly. This one's a reproduction from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts, but it aligns the original frame perfectly. And alignment is going to be important. And here's a tool that I use. This is a welder's or a metal worker's tool or alignment tool. You can get them at any hardware store. And it's basically tapered so you can fit it into slots and holes in multiple parts and line them up so you can install the bolts or the rivets. So here's our heavy pinnel hook. And this they are heavy. They're just, it's not a light little thing. And it is kind of difficult to just kind of hold it up there with your thumb or stick two bolts in because you've got the plate in the back to go through. So here's what we do. We take my tool here and we align everything up and we'll leave that right in there and keep my hand on the outside. Now I've got one of the bolts ready right here and it will be easy for me to hold that up with my hand and slide that bolt through both the front hole of the pintle hook, the frame, the reinforcement plate in the rear, and that pin is, is holding that up while I do this. It's really kind of simple but neat thing. I'll show you from the back side here and we'll install the lock washer and the nut on that top bolt. Uh, that tool is, in, is invaluable when you're installing accessories, especially when you're going through multiple pieces of metal. It really works well for aligning things and keeping things in place when you're working by yourself and you've only got a little bit of space. They go by a bunch of different names uh, available for tools. You, some people call them pins, some people call them drifts, some people call them actually alignment tools. Inevitably what you call it is a fantastic tool to have on the job as you see here. Now I haven't tightened any of those bolts or nuts up and then I've pulled the drift out and I can install the second top bolt and I'll go behind on the back side and install the lock washer and the nut. I'm only putting them on hand tight for the time being. As you'll see in the future here uh, shortly we're going to have to align those four holes. Even though they're perfect the same, you still got to line them up when you put the bolts inside because of the little space that's between the actual bolt diameter itself. The first eye bolt will install here in the lower right hand corner and I can move that a little bit around with my hand as you can see so we can keep those holes really lined up as nice. It's, it's, you'll see in a second here that I'm not kidding, even though that thing is perfect, you still kind of got to play with it to get it in there. So anyways, here's our eye bolt and I've got the lock washer and nut taken off and I'm going to install the hole. Now, your safety chain would go through there and this is where it's going to get interesting because I've seen these both installed horizontally 
and I've seen them installed 45 degree angle to the frame and I've seen them installed vertically to the frame as well. I've seen multiple pictures and we went through and did a lot of research and I had a bunch of folks send me pictures with all kind of different uh, variations of those eye bolts in the back. I'm going to go ahead and do them horizontally because that seems to be the most common on the MBs. We'll go ahead and install the lock washer in the back and check out that heavy duty nut. That's, that's really something and we'll install that on the back. Again, this stuff has to be heavy duty. You're pulling trailers and with a lunette eyes on the back and the uh, pinnacle hook's got to stay closed and those safety chains have got to stay on. So this is, this is some heavy duty stuff here. Now, watch here. I, even though I can move it around, I'm trying to get that in there, it just doesn't want to go and it's only by a little bit. So now we've kept everything loose. We're going to go back to our alignment tool or our drift or our punch, whatever you prefer to call it, and we'll put that in there and we'll use that. See how that tapers in there and it lines everything up and then you can hold that with your thumb and now that eye bolt will go through that hole. I, I know it may seem simple, but this is something that a lot of folks get hung up on for a, a $10 tool that you can purchase. See how it went right in there? It's beautiful. Still got everything loose. I'll go ahead and put the lock washer and nut on the back side of that uh, eyelet there and then we'll go in and we'll tighten up all the fasteners. Now in searching I couldn't find any specific torque values for these fasteners. Here again let me show you this how I'm going to turn this sideways like that. I'm telling you it's really something how many pictures I've seen. If you don't believe me look it up for yourself. So uh, back to the torque values. I wasn't able to find any specific torque values in any of the uh, MB manuals. I'm just using a box end open and a wrench here on the front and I am using a half inch drive socket in the rear there and you want to get these really tight. I mean I, there's an old mechanic saying about tight is tight and if you've fastened a bunch of bolts you kind of know when they're fastened tight or not but you really do want to get these nice and snug because again this is a safety issue it's going to be pulling a trailer behind your vehicle and then on the bottom here I'm going to show you another little trick with our drift or our punch uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the nuts tight and I can do so pretty close just by holding it by hand and I'm keeping my eyes horizontal there. When I get to the point where it's about to get really tight I will stick the drift in the side of the hole just as you see me here and I can use that to hold that in place while I'm tightening uh, finally the nut. And see how you just that tool I cannot brag enough about that tool. I think what I'm going to do is uh, go out and have a bunch of G503 punches made like this because I'm telling you this is one of the best tools you can have in your toolbox. Okay so we've got everything snugged up here and nice and tight and just give it a one time go around make sure everything's snugged up and I'll take the camera back here and I will show you from the back side uh, how this looks with the lock washers and nuts on the rear reinforcement plate. The last thing I'll do because I don't want these nice clean bolts rusting up on me is I'll go ahead and I'll give them a couple light coats with the Barrier 3 Red Oxide Primer from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and I just keep the aerosol cans on hand and use them as I go. I've painted this frame almost a year ago. Um, even though it's been in the garage the paint will match exactly as it does out of the gallons in the aerosol cans. Once the primer dries up and it dries really quick and you try that primer you're really going to like it. I'll go back through now and I'll give it two or three coats of the 33070 World War II Low Luster Olive Drab from RFJP and it will blend right in. I love this paint, can't say enough about it. I know I talk a lot about it in the videos. It's because I really believe in it and I think it's just absolutely fantastic and spot on. Easy to use, easy to apply, dries quickly and matches perfectly. Uh, you can't say enough about it. Here, we'll take a look here. We're all finished up. Let this dry up and there you have it. Your pinnel hook is installed. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. You didn't think there'd be that little many discrepancies, but there is. And uh, the biggest one I find is funny is the actual those eyelet hooks, how many different photographs I've seen. Now, I don't know if they came that way specifically from a factory or if they got changed during wartime or if they got twisted and loosened. I don't know. But as I said in the video, you've got them horizontal on some, vertical on some, at 45 degree angles on some. And I've actually seen them where they've been twisted like this. And we did a lot of looking at pictures. So there you go. That's how you put the pinto hook on the back side of your chassis. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to what we're doing with the 1943 Wilson MB and some funny stuff that we do along the way, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button and hit that bell at the bottom also so you can be notified when we uh, release new videos. Until next time, my friends, keep it safe. Poom! Pinto hook it and happy jeeping.